For many, learning how to swim is a rite of passage, but a surprising number of American children can't swim. Part of that comes down to access and restrictions rooted in racism that have kept generations of swimmers out of pools. Isabella Chabilia of Rhode Island PBS explores the fight for swim safety. One night, phone call, woman sobbing on the phone telling me that her child had drowned at five o'clock at Lincoln Woods. It was the early 90s, and Ray Rickman was a Rhode Island state representative. It was that phone call from a grieving mother that sent Rickman on a new path, advocating for water safety. She watched her son drown. She could not swim. Can you imagine? You can imagine. In the United States, an average of 11 people are drowning every day. Mara Gay was an avid swimmer growing up. Today, she's on the New York Times editorial board and has written about swim access and safety. So we're losing 4,000 people a year to drowning. It's the leading cause of death for children from one to four. Drowning is something that affects Americans of all backgrounds. However, it does disproportionately affect minorities. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Black children are 1.5 times more likely, and Native American children are two times more likely than white children to die of drowning. Gay says for Black Americans, that gap is rooted in slavery. So Black Americans, many people know, were not allowed to learn how to read during slavery. Many times they also weren't allowed to learn how to swim, and that's because it would have made it easier to escape to freedom. Dogs couldn't track your scent in water, which was known among enslaved Americans. During segregation, you had public pools that were not open to Black Americans. Even after segregation ended, many Black Americans were still unwelcome. Storyteller V. Ruffini grew up in Rhode Island. Pools weren't segregated, but they were racist. And when we got there, we dealt with the racism. I can remember them calling us names like the walking Tootsie Roll, or there's a Hershey bar in the, in the pool. And, um, you know, all straight out coming out with the N-word. But intimidation wasn't the only way African Americans were driven out of pools. Many communities across the South, but also elsewhere, unfortunately, chose to fill in, destroy, or close their public pools rather than allow Black Americans to swim in them. So white, wealthier Americans who were able to started forming their own clubs, their own neighborhood associations that were, of course, segregated, and the rest of America was shut out. Wayne Willis and his family are working to reverse that trend through their business, Orca Aquatics. His son, Dylan, coaches the swim team. One, two, three, and his daughter, four. Sydney, and wife, Joanna, give swim lessons. Some of these students are able to learn for free thanks to former state representative Ray Rickman. Our number one goal is to teach now, low-income children to swim and to avoid drowning. He started a program called Swim Empowerment to sponsor swim lessons for black and low-income youth. 2,600 children have learned to swim through the program so far. The reason so many Americans can't swim is because they don't have safe places to learn to do so. Public pools are the critical piece of this puzzle. So it would be the equivalent of calling for education for all Americans without having any schools. In August, a chlorine explosion shut down the pool where Orca Aquatics holds its lessons. Until the damage is fixed, they're teaching at a different pool, but have had to cut back swim lessons from seven days a week to three. The shortage of pools in the area has inspired Ray Rickman to expand his mission. A $20 million Olympic plus swimming pool for the people of Providence to come free, to swim. And we're gonna get it done. Rickman hopes that one day, everyone in his community will have a place to swim. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Isabella Jabillion in Providence, Rhode Island.